key to to successfully being able to hold your breath longer and dive down longer is relaxing is it I mean is absolutely it absolutely hands down it is it's like so almost like counterintuitive like when you even just see something like this and you think of spearing a fish it just sounds very like aggressive yeah you for know? sure and that type of energy not only will you not be able to hold your breath if you're being too aggro or aggressive but you're going to scare away everything in the ocean they can sense that and so you want to bring yourself to the most zen place like in your mind that you could ever be and that's what's going to make the hunt a good one i feel like if there's anywhere that people could learn to just chill out a little bit probably inside a professional yeah. restaurant kitchen just don't black out because i won't be there <laughs> well okay we're gonna work on that i am gonna teach you a little we're gonna go now we're gonna go energy we're gonna go kitchen energy okay. i have a dish that i want to show you i think you're really gonna like it i'm a little nervous because you know a lot about octopus but i want to show you the way that i make it oh awesome i need more octopus recipes all right good well i need like eight arms because there's so <laughs> many different components to this there's gonna be well there's just gonna be a lot of stuff so let's start getting this set up okay I'm very excited that you're letting me show you an octopus dish today. I feel a little bit intimidated, honestly. I feel like you're the octopus pro, not me. But I only have about four go-to recipes, and so learning a new one really excites me. Well, now you'll have five, okay. and I will have still just the one. But <laughs> that's okay. I want to show you this because it's something that I really enjoy. And it's kind of a bizarre preparation. So it starts by actually braising the octopus. Now, that's not that strange, but what you braise it in is what's kind of strange, which is basically a full gallon of red wine vinegar. That like, is a lot of vinegar. Yeah, not diluted, wow. just pure red wine vinegar. Okay. So I like to load this thing up with a lot of aromatics um, before we braise it. So do me a favor, take one of those red onions um, and let's just kind of cut it into quarters or sixth or something like that. Just okay. chuck it in this, into this liquid. So I'm gonna add a ton of black peppercorns, like a good two tablespoons of black peppercorns to this. I'm also gonna add some fresh thyme a pretty good handful of fresh thyme. That's perfect. Oh, then it smells so good already. Cut that head of garlic in half for me, if you don't mind. And then somewhere around here, there's Ooh. some bay leaves, if you see them. Actually, they're sitting bay over there by you. here. Yeah, throw all of those This is there. another favorite ingredient of mine. Oh, bay leaves? Yes. All right, then I think you're gonna like this. This seems like it has a lot of your favorite ingredients <laughs> in it, so this is good. I'm gonna put a lid on this, set it on the stove, and bring it to a boil. And then once it's actually up to a boil, we'll chuck the octopus in it as well. Awesome. All right, so you're very familiar with these. A little fresh octopus here. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it's just such an amazing yield where it's like literally all meat. Yeah, you know? exactly, the whole thing. For today, we're gonna focus on using the tentacles. That's mostly because I really like when these little teeny tiny edges get charred up. I like how they get like kind of crunchy and Definitely. crispy and stuff like that. So that's one of my favorites. So let's take this right here and let's just chuck it into our pot. I already have the oven preheated to 225 degrees. And so the idea is that we'll put it in here, put the lid on, and then put the whole thing in the oven and 45 minutes to maybe two hours. Like, who knows? We'll just oh, have to okay. check it and see. Octopus was not something that I knew how to prepare for years. It was just, it just never really factored into the style of cooking that I did. But I have a very, very dear friend named Pano Karatasas, who's a chef in Atlanta, who's from Greece. And dining in his restaurant, I had his octopus dish and I was just blown away by it and thankfully he showed me how to make it. And we're gonna be cooking over actual, like live wood fire today because I want that smoke. All right, so I'm gonna put you to work here. Please Are you ready? Do, yes. Okay, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make um, kind of the base to this dish, which is almost like hummus. We're gonna start by making this tahini vinaigrette. So will you crush up some garlic for me? Like maybe three or four cloves. Just smash it. Yeah, smash it, but then mince it up pretty oh, fine okay. for me as well. Do you ever use tahini? Not that much. I mean, the only time I ever really work with it is in, when I'm making hummus. If I have it, I'll throw it in. Right. But it's one of my favorite ingredients. It's like, just pure sesame, right? Yeah, just pure sesame paste, like peanut butter, but sesame right. seeds. And I'm gonna juice a lemon into it. I'll probably end up juicing a couple of lemons. And once that's all chopped up, like really, really fine, try to almost like paste, Okay. then chuck it in this bowl as well. So this is kind of like a hybrid dish to a certain degree because certainly the octopus preparation 
is very Greek, but then this kind of base is actually more of like a Turkish dish mm. um, where you make this hummus and you intentionally leave it very, very coarse and very thick. So I find that if you add some hot water to it and just kind of keep stirring it, it will eventually like, it'll go backwards. It'll go back to being nice and fluid. I found that out myself, like doing um, a cooking presentation and I was so nervous and it turned into a brick. I was trying to make a peanut sauce <laughs> and thank goodness it was the hot water that saved Yeah, me. exactly. Like you just have to power through. Like right. if you keep mixing it, all of a sudden now you're back to this where it's really, really nice and fluid. I'm going to throw a big pinch of salt in here as well. It is garlicky. It's going to be garlicky. I like Get it. Get ready. These are all flavors I love. Okay, good. This is a dish that is going to be very bright and acidic. Like if, if I had one takeaway from my time in Greece, it was that the food was much, much more acidic than I thought it would be. Like what you eat stateside, sure it has lemon and it has vinegar and stuff, but it just, it doesn't have the same level of it that you actually get when you're in Greece. That stuff is, packs a pretty good wallop. And totally. So this is based very much off of that. And in fact, I'm gonna add the juice of maybe half a lemon over again. Will you drizzle this in while I whisk? Yes. It's teamwork. It's beautiful. So this is another like kind of funny thing about it. It actually has a little bit of yogurt in this hummus. So I've never done that like before. One, yeah, at least one big spoonful. Let's go with that first. Let me just whisk this in and see. Yeah, it's it's it lightens the whole thing up quite a bit, you know? Let's see. We'll probably need to adjust the seasoning. Mm. I don't know, it's pretty close. Oh my god. That is wonderful. It's pretty close. Wow. I, I love this. You like it? Yes. Awesome. So I'm just going to kind of use my whisk here to break these up just a little bit. So let's just set this out of the way here for a second. So this dish also has tons of herbs in it. If you want to pick some dill, I'm going to chop up some, uh, some chives here real quick. You know, most of the stuff that, that I have seen as far as like the way that, it, that I had these dishes served when I was in Greece, everything was a little bit more, I hate using the word rustic because it makes it sound like it wasn't intentional, but it was just, they just want you to know what something is. You know, they really want you to go, oh, that's this thing. Like they're very proud of their ingredients. Totally. I, and I love the word rustic. And when I think of like my time spent in Greece, I felt like that was exactly what it was. It just, yeah. um, the soul of the ingredients are left pure still. We do just get into like um, autopilot, like herbs, mince them, and we are kind of over manipulating something that doesn't have to be. Yeah, and not to mention that, especially with herbs, they're very delicate, and the more you chop them, yes, that first kind of pass helps release some of their flavors, but it also can go the other way really quickly. Right. And you can chop them to the point where we you're bruising it. them yeah. and you lose their flavor, exactly. And we obviously, we don't want that to happen. So what we're basically doing here is just creating a really a basic herb salad. So parsley, dill, chives, lots of lemon juice, lots of extra virgin olive oil. We have some capers. We don't need to do anything with those. Those okay. are just ready to go. But we do want to go ahead and take these olives, if you don't mind, just kind of cut them in half for us, you know? Just smaller bites. I can just see this in my mind already, and it is beautiful. It has a looseness and a kind of I think of being on the islands and how everybody was just relaxed. And this dish has a relaxed quality about it while everything simultaneously is just very thoughtfully done. Intentionally relaxed. Exactly. That's a good way to be. I'm working on that for myself. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need a lot more practice, but I'm working on that. So this is ready to go. Um, we'll just set this aside for a second. I wanna make the pickled onions now. And it's just a really basic pickled onion. It's not anything elaborate. It's just a little bit of the actual liquid from the braising octopus. So I'm gonna ah. take some of that, just kind of ladle it off hot over the onions. Never pickled onion in octopus juice before. In octopus I'm juice, yeah. yeah. I think that's probably not the most common method of pickling <laughs> onions, but I like it because it just, for me, it just continues that flavor of like that oceanic flavor. Totally. Plus, it's like right now, some of that octopus juice has sort of infused into that vinegar, but not all of it because it, it hasn't quite cooked enough. So it's just got a nice light kind of briny na nature to it. All right, so these are done now. They've, they've done their thing, they've braised, they've sort of just sat here and chilled a little bit. Do these look completely 
like strange compared to the way you normally do them? No, I mean, I guess the, the skin just kind of cooked right off of them or? Yeah, that vinegar kind of pulls it off, I you know? See. So you don't actually have to go in and now peel them very much. But here, let me show you what I like to do with them. So some people leave all the, you know, all the pieces on. I kind of just, oh you know, kind of rub, rub them, them off, off just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like what I'll try to do here is take one and I'll let you do one. Here, why don't you grab one too? Sure. I just think they look better if you kind of wipe at least that little bit of like the albumin that kind of is it on the outside. It seems you know? like it would be just one less layer of film. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. In your mouth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I just love octopus. I mean, they're so alien-like. <laughs> they definitely are very alien. I um, I don't even know how you like how you fish for how you catch an octopus. Like, how do you do it? So for me, I'm always just like swimming around and just studying the bottom of the ocean and just looking for any dark spot, any shadow, anything that looks a little different, or I look for overturned rocks. Octopus, they live in these holes, but in order to you know make a hole under a rock, they have to take all these little rocks out. And the way that rocks sit underwater there's a sediment side that kind of gets like dusty and then there's like a really bright colorful side. So if I see a whole bunch of bright colorful coral or rock you know, outside of this hole, I'll go down and I'll just take my spear and I'll just kind of stick it in there. Not, I don't just spear them in the hole because yeah. I don't know how big they are, I don't know what's going on, but I just want to tickle them, just tickle, <laughs> tickle, tickle. And um, one by one, these crazy legs will just come out and grab my spear and that's when I want to grab the octopus, bite it right in between the eyes, that's like crunching its brain, and um, head to the surface. That's pretty intense, Kimmy. <laughs> I mean, I like it. I'm on board with that. But yeah. once the octopus's face is in my mouth, I can <laughs> use my teeth and I can feel, I can feel exactly where to bite. And so it's just a very convenient, efficient way of just crunching, getting the job done, you know, yeah. as humanely as possible. Is it wrapping its tentacles around your head while there you're was, doing that? It totally could. So there's a trick to it. And what I do is I hold it in by its head and all its arm, its legs will go up my arm and it'll try and pull its head out. And when it's in that, that position, that's when I crunch. Okay. If you try to crunch before that, it'll rip your mask off, give you hickeys all over your face. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. Did you, did you learn that through practice? Like oh, they're yeah. doing it the wrong way? And, and I can't even tell you how many people I've tried to teach and just watch them get mouthfuls of ink right in their mouth oh, or, or just like, lose everything that they're wearing from this octopus. Yeah, I believe that. It definitely, it takes some time to acquire <laughs> the skill. Honestly, these are, I mean, all I have to do is just chuck these on the grill for a minute, let them okay. get nice and charred up and warm. We have a really nice Greek extra virgin olive oil that I'll put on there. That way we also get just a little bit more char. So nice, yes. I'm gonna go outside and grill it. If okay. you would do me a favor, will you warm up the hummus while I'm outside? Stove top. Yeah, just stove up. top, yep. And it doesn't even need to be like bubbly, just okay. warm, just warm. Okay, I can do that. How's it looking? Really good. Like not oh, only perfect. did I not break the sauce, but I think it emulsified even more while yeah. cooking it. It, looks, it smells phenomenal. That garlic really does, like it wakes it's up all of a sudden. So good. It's nice, it's nice. These came out oh, great. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, they look really good. Really tightened and kind of yeah, exactly. dried up that moisture yeah, on the outside. Yeah, got some good char on the outside of it. Here, you can try a piece. Oh, yes. We'll put the whole dish together here in a second, but. We have to know the components. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Good. I think we got some good smoke wow. on it. Like, I like the way that it was really getting a nice mm. smoky consistency on the outside of it. And just like that nice light hint of the acid and the aromatics you cooked it in. Right. Totally come through. Awesome. The braising and the acid and everything that you put into that is something totally new to me. So I'm just giving this thing a shower in extra virgin olive oil. I want it to be nice and shiny really, really pretty. You know, as a matter of fact, one last thing for it, because I think this is really nice, is just a little bit of lemon zest in here too, so. All right, I think we've done enough work. You wanna actually taste it now? Yes. All right, cool, here, let's plate it up.
that's it. Wow. That is a plate of love. Like every single bite, you can just tell. Do you want to try it? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Let's get some forks out. I thought here. you'd never ask. I know, I know. I've been playing with it too long. So. It is so pretty to look at. Now it's but time to try it. This is the important part. Exactly. You make, a, you make a mess of it. This olive mm. and a tentacle. Now that is a wonderful That's bite. That's a bite. That is so good. <laughs> Yum. That is delicious. Oh my god. It's just, I love like, mm. I love how meaty octopus wow. is when you braise it and grill it. And then to have it with something that has so much acidity and punch, like the pickled onions, the lemon juice, the little bit of lemon zest, the capers, like, and it just keeps changing because mm. as you're getting a bite of something else, you get like a little bit different flavor in there. 100%, it, like the meatiness of the octopus and your smashed garbanzo beans yeah. have the same type of meatiness. And then everything else is just like, one beautiful punch after another, like of just these layers, you know, the yeah. olives, the capers, the lemon, it's just like. You get that little bit of bitterness also from the tahini. And it would not be the same without the pickled onions, not just for the punch, but that texture, that crunch, you know? It's like, that is like a finishing satisfaction that you just need after all this soft. Exactly. I just, I just love the way this dish comes together. And I attribute it entirely to my friend Pana who taught me how to make this octopus. And then I just kind of took the ball and ran with it Man. and built this. You guys did good. Good <laughs> That's collab. Really delicious. Well now, here's the real test. Now you take this home and you put the Kimmy spin. Oh, I will, I will. Like this is something I will absolutely be repeating. And um, yeah, I'll give it a little Hawaii flair, I'm sure.